Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're joined with Rajesh Shukla, the head of product from THL. Rajesh, welcome to the show. Can you start by telling our audience a little bit about Tourism Holdings Limited? So Tourism Holding is basically one of the largest uh, RV rental operator in the world. Uh, this has all started in New Zealand. Uh, we have got uh, branches in Australia, New Zealand, USA, UK, and also we've got a couple of franchises in Japan and South South Africa. So we are in five different continents. Uh, in Australia and New Zealand, we have got 35 years of history. In the US, we have got 50 years of history. So we are in five continents at the same time. We are all connected with the same one network, that's a THL. And uh, we are global, but at the same time, we are a local Kiwi company. Now, we are largest RV rental company at the same time. The model, how it works is basically we build our camper van. So there is a manufacturing plant in New Zealand. So we build our camper van and we rent them. And after renting them, we sell them. So we've got a really good model, um, build, rent, and sell. So when we are building this camper van, we also build quite a lot of specialized vehicle. Um, so you'll be surprised that uh, we've built vehicle for New Zealand Ambulance. Um, we build vehicle for New Zealand Defense. We also build vehicle, specialized vehicle for New Zealand Police. And in Australia, we build ambulances for Queensland. So it's, it's a fascinating business and where, you know, all the businesses are struggling in tourism, uh, we are making quite a good uh, profit in our specialized uh, manufacturing division. And we, make, we have got a backlog of almost three years to build these specialized uh, vehicles. So it's pretty fascinating business. Absolutely. I was just going to ask you, you know, how has your business been impacted over the last year, given everything that's operating and happening within the tourism sector at the moment? So keeping in mind, uh, you know, we have got this, uh, you know, manufacturing, um, which is doing really well. At the same time, being part of the tourism, we had to really evaluate our business. So basically look at the each and every part of the business and see how we can make money. So we have to basically focus on the sales division. So we basically sold close to 2,900 camper van throughout the year across. And these are with really good profit. So we basically changed our model. We also basically started focusing on some of the domestic markets. So we've got grown quite a good uh, domestic market in different areas, different part of the world. At the same time, we started basically focusing on this specific vehicle design. Um, now, when there was a COVID, we also had a lot of opportunities in different part of the world. So if, as you know, um, with a camper van, you can basically isolate in your bubble. So it's your home, which is moving with you. So we started using that concept in different part of the world for isolation. We also given, in New Zealand, we're using these uh, camper van for vaccinations. It's called vaccination van, which is moving around all over the world. Now you'll be surprised to know, um, during this pandemic, uh, our balance sheet is really strong. This is really, you know, one of the strongest balance sheet we had in recent time. So when other companies are basically going through the, you know, raising the equity, uh, tourism holding is basically really strong leader in that market and it's growing every day. And we, we have also invested quite a lot in digital area and those businesses are doing really well in this, in this environment. Wow, that is truly so impressive that despite everything that's been going on, you know, over the last year or two, that you guys have still managed to have one of your strongest years yet. Amazing work, seriously. So what role does AWS actually play in your technology strategy? Because you've spoken a lot about the business, but how does AWS fit in? So I think, you know, we have to start the journey from, uh, you know, why we started AWS. So what we had was we had a, a really old monolithic application. And as you know, you all know that, you know, there's a lot of problems with monolithic applications. If you want to basically scale your application, if you want to grow your application. So as a business, we're growing all over the world. And what is what was stopping us to grow was this application, which is sitting in the core. So what we decided to do is basically, we said that, you know, we have to scale, we have to move forward. We started looking at how exactly we can grow this. And one thing came in mind is basically, why don't we start working on the microservices architecture? So when we started looking at the microservices architecture, we had to look for the partner. And uh, only one name came in the mind, that was AWS. And the reason for that is basically, uh, we had to get into innovation. And so when you're basically innovating, you need, you'd have to basically think about how I can get this environment ready so that I can try out something and destroy and move on from there. And uh, so we have to get away from the infrastructure 
and do the best of what we do, which is the coding. So we basically got with AWS. Now, the reason basically we started using AWS because as we all know, it basically got a really good, you know, scalable product, what you can build with AWS. At the same time, security, uh, which was a really key for us because we've got close to 120 microservices. And so we had a bit really focused on security and AWS gives you out of the box. We are using quite a lot of AIM roles from AWS. And after that, AWS has been in the market for quite a long time. So they've also got a really good community network. So if you need any help, you know, search for help, it is available there and you can basically get answer on that. So we've got really large community group uh, related to AWS. So you can get a lot of help from there. Um, AWS, if you're price conscious, um, there's a lot of tools to basically monitor your pricing. So we've got, uh, you know, you can have a price, you can put a alert on it. It will basically ping you, hey, you basically hit your budget so you can adjust your requirement. At the same time, as I said that we are innovative company. And so we had to basically do rapid prototyping. So the concept in the business is basically we double up fast and fail fast. And that's the only way you can do is basically rapid prototyping. And that basically really helps in that case. And keeping in mind, we are global business. We are all over the place in the world. So we had to basically really think about high availability. We have 24 seven business. So, you know, AWS has got availability zone and different regions. So that really helps quite a lot. And at the same time, because we're innovating so much, uh, there's a lot of SDK and APIs available out of the box from AWS. So we are using quite a lot of APIs from out of the box from AWS. And at the same time, if you need any expertise, there's a lot of expertise in AWS. You can reach out to them and they will help you. So from my point of view, you know, leave complicated infrastructure structure to basically the people who does best and what we do best is basically develop. And that's what we do. So that's an obvious choice here in AWS. Oh my God, Rajesh, I've been smiling the entire time of this answer because I actually want to hire you in my team. I mean, you, what a glowing review. Thank you so much. Uh, this is everything that we pride ourselves on and, and hope that our customers love about us. So, wow, thank you so much, um, you know, for, for sharing that experience. And we're so happy. And what I want to know next is, I guess, like, how does innovation fit in with your business priorities? Because you've obviously um, gone to microservices, you've broken down the monolith, um, and you're obviously very passionate about innovation, which is why your company has done so well in the last year. So can you share a little bit more about that? So technically, you know, um, you know, innovation is a part of the business. So keeping in mind, we are a um, you know, world leader in the RV industry. Um, so we have to basically keep innovating. At the same time, you know, we've got these camper van moving on the road, and we have got telematics device sitting in this camper van. It's basically feeding data to us you know, every second. So we have to be really smart how we utilize this data to help our customer. So innovation is basically ingrained in the business every day. This is what we do. We have got really smart pricing um, concept. We've got, we've got you know, two and a half thousand camper van and we've got 8,000 rental. And if you want to schedule how you can schedule these things, so you have to be really innovative how you can basically utilize those things to basically solve this complex problem. So it's a part of the business and we do that every day to be you know, part of the you know, business leader in this industry. I definitely agree that to be the leader in any industry, you're required to be continuously innovative. So thank you so much. And Rajesh, to round off this interview, there's an, a massive skills shortage currently in the New Zealand market. So are there any initiatives that you guys at THL are taking to kind of combat this? So differently, you know, we, we call it the great resignation, right? So there is everywhere um, resignation is happening and we are not different, right? We had a, quite a lot of resignation within the company. And so, you know, at the same time, we basically said, yeah, we basically reminded ourselves, you know, as a, as a company, what exactly we are, you know? So we used to call ourselves basically unforgettable holidays. We basically changed that vision. Now we are basically unforgettable journey. So we are in a specific journey, we make it, you know, for customer, for everyone individual who's working in the company, so they, they can remember. So we basically um, put a lot of time in our people. We basically said that, you know, what are our capabilities within the team? Like we can go and hire outside, but there's no, no one is available. So we started looking within the team that what exactly we have got, where exactly gaps are. And we basically, when we started analyzing our team, what we found is basically, we got a quite a lot of senior people within the team. So we said, okay, we've got a quite a lot of senior team. How exactly we can fill those other role 
where we don't need the senior, senior people. So we basically started looking at the, you know, the people who is basically freshers, which is coming from the universities. So we basically tapped into that market and tried, started getting those, um, you know, freshers from the unis and basically started training them. So we done quite a lot, basically we signed up quite a, quite a lot of local bodies here to basically get stream of people from, through the channel. But at the same time, we said that the people, what we have got, let's look after them. So we started giving them training, AWS again, you know, our partner, we started giving them training in AWS, different, different um, models. And we started sending through the certification, like, you know, the, what training does is basically it makes your, um, you know, mental well-being quite happy. You start feeling happy because you're getting something. So we started getting people through the certification and then huge focus on data-driven business and the security. So we started doing how, how we can do things differently based on the data, what we have got. So a lot of things, well-being, as we know, we are all under lockdown. We have to look after our people. We quite a lot focus on the well-being. And after that, you know, look after your people and invest in them. So those are the initiative what we did internally. And that basically holding the people at the same time, we're able to get those fresh mind who can innovate within the business and keep growing. So that, that's, you know, those are the things we basically looked at. Rajesh, what a pleasure it's been speaking to you today. Honestly, THL is so lucky to have you. I would hire you in a minute. You are such a passionate, uh, amazing person. So thank you so much for sharing the success of THL and some of the tips and, and why you chose AWS uh, to partner with you guys. Um, I re really look forward to continuing to watch your journey in a post-COVID world and see how the business kind of pivots there as well. So thank you so much. And if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Bye-bye.